What's up, everybody? Another wonderful Monday night at Chewing the Barbecue Fat. Oh, man, what a show we got tonight. Hopefully you survived cooking this week. Man, it was a hot one, uh, but there are a lot of points out there to be had, a lot of contests to be had, a lot of doubles going on, and man, really cool to see. We, get, we do have a winner on tonight. That's not why we have a winner. I mean, we always have winners on. That's what we do. Um, and you will learn something. I bet my goal tonight is to give you all a little bit of information, a little bit of help on how to go win another grand like some of these other guys always do. Um, but that being said, like the page, share the page, subscribe to our YouTube page. Love it. Appreciate every one of y'all. Uh, best viewers in all of barbecue. And hope to have a good show tonight. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And oh, Chuck East, my man, how you doing? Hope you're feeling better. I heard you're... I heard you slept through in the night the other day. I heard you're going through it, guys. Chuck's on. Uh, Chuck and Kerry, he went through his surgery, doing well, from what I understand. Glad to see you, buddy. Been praying for you. Everybody pray for Chuck East uh, as he's going through his recovery from his surgery, guys. Um, my man Nicholas is on. How you doing? Good evening. So if you read the caption, it says, listen to the show if you want to win. And, and the reason that is, I feel like class season is starting to uh, get brought up. We're past halfway through the season. Um, things are going on. It's time to figure out what you got to do, finish strong this year, and then try to get ready for next year what's going on. So we've got a lot of information tonight to give you an opportunity for you to go out and win another contest. I'm telling you right now, if you haven't taken classes, if you're not doing what it takes to go get better, ugh, it's on us. It's on us if we don't win, right? What's up, Richard? How you doing? Good to see you, Beard Monkey. Are you going back to Pussy Q this weekend or this year to get another one of those big old huge trophies? Aaron, how you doing? Good to see you. All right, so that's enough of me talking. That's enough of me blabbing. Y'all want to win. Y'all want to figure out how to win. And I love talking to winners. So here we go. We're just going to go ahead and get started. So I do enjoy getting to be able to talk to some of my best friends in barbecue. And that's what it's all about. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up, pull up my buddy, Paul. Paul, how you doing, my man? Doing good, Brian. Let's chew some fat. Let's chew some fat. I tell you what, what a guy. Guys, if you want to learn something, this is the guy to learn it from. Him and his wife, Lynn. Tried my hardest to get her to come on tonight, but she said she has something better to do, so it's all good. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, how you doing, Paul? I'm doing great, man. I uh, appreciate being on the show tonight. Yeah, man. Do you know what to do with yourself? Because you did not cook this weekend or last weekend. Well, I, I cooked in my driveway, so I figured I would please the judges in my driveway, and I sweated it out this weekend myself along with some other people. But uh, but I just said, well, I, I'm not cooking in a contest somewhere, so I didn't want to lose that feel and had some – some coal meat, so I just spent the day burning it in the driveway. Man, I tell you what, didn't want to lose it. Now, I'm telling you guys, they don't, they don't want to lose it, so he's cooking in his driveway to get better. What did you do this weekend other than stay inside the air conditioner and not practice it? I'm with you. <laughs> um, all right, and then my man Drew Davis. How you doing, buddy? Pretty good, Brian. Appreciate you having me on. Man, I tell you what, guys, I told you. We love having we love having good cooks on, but better than that, we like having good people on, and that's what we do. We have some great people on tonight. I tell you what, proud to call both friends. Um, just just it's, we're gonna have a lot of fun. So get your questions ready. Um, they do have something coming up, which we're gonna talk about, but that's not all we're gonna talk about tonight. We're gonna chew a lot of fat, as Paul said. He's ready to chew the fat, so let's get rolling. Um, let's go. Let's roll. All right, so let's just dive right in. What does it take to be a champion pit master? Drew, you just won. Let's hear it. Uh, sure. Um, one is uh, a lot of self-awareness. Like, uh, I hear it a lot from cooks. Like, they just don't understand, like, why their scores are fluctuating one way or the other. And I'm sure Paul's been there. I've been there. But really be able to look at yourself, look at your product, be critical of yourself, and know, like, when it's your fault and when it just may be a bad table of judges, too. Does that happen? I didn't know that. Oh, okay. So it's so okay. Most of the yeah. time, I will say it's, it's my fault if I screw up. Most <laughs> of the time. Okay. That's un, that's yeah. unheard of here in the uh, barbecue yeah. world. I'd love to hear it. Um, Paul, what do you think? 
Yeah, no, I, I think Drew's right on with that. Sometimes you just kind of look at yourself and you got to figure out there's certain areas where we do a little better than others. And uh, this year was noticeable. We were in some areas that historically we haven't always done the greatest. So you, that that doubt starts to creep in your head a little bit and, and you really start analyzing everything and second guessing everything. And uh, so we, we had to kind of re back up and set, let's do what we do. And, and I think that experience this year has really taught me uh, just just go cook, you know, don't 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 rely so much on timelines and, and recipes and things. When that when that thing when that meat hits that finishing board, you, you still gotta taste it, you still gotta adjust to it. Don't so don't be afraid to to go with what you think it needs and turn it in the box at the end. Don't don't skip on the salt if you think it needs salt just because your timeline or your recipe says don't add salt or it says don't, you know, the salt's not on it. So uh, in the end you're you're still a cook and and meats are all different. And, and you still got to do that part at the end. So just go with your gut and, and, you, and you'll do better. Every piece of meat's different, right? I mean, you've cooked, you've cooked yeah. hundreds of thousands of whatever. Yeah. Every, every brisket, every pork, every rib, every chicken, it all has a different flavor, different taste in, in and of itself. So you have to know what you're looking for, correct? Yeah. yeah, I mean, you, 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 I mean, you, you get that experience more than anything. But I, I guess the, the, the nature of it is, is just, just don't be afraid to, to put flavor to it. You know, if you think it's missing something, don't, don't be afraid to put something on it. If just because your, your recipe doesn't have it on there. So if, if, and just, I'm just throwing it out there. I mean, I know what Drew's going to say, um, Paul. But if something, if something you, you taste the food and you just say it's, it's not there, it's not what you want. Do you have a go-to finishing rub or rub or something that you're going to go to all day maybe? Or, I mean, what, do you have something that you're going to go after? Like, what do you, what, what is something that you could have that would help in that? Well, it just depends on what it's missing, right? I mean, there's basically three things that, that you can have there that, that I kind of key on. It's either, it's either salty or too salty. It's uh, either sweet or too sweet, or it doesn't have that little bit of pop from heat. Uh, so if it's missing one of those three, you kind of know how to adjust. Um, if it's too salty, you can kind of sweeten it up a little bit to try to tone that down a little bit. So I, it, it's just learning a little bit that, and, and you can do the exact same thing. I don't care if you measure it to the T and put it on that piece of meat. When you cook it, when it comes out, it's going to be a little different from week to week, just depending on how much injection that, that meat held and how much it, it, it boiled out throughout the, the wrap process. It just changes your finishing a little bit. So you, you kind of have to, not be afraid to, to to go for it, so to speak. Yeah. So, so for me, Drew, I'll ask you because Paul won't tell me. Okay. Uh, for me, if I cook a brisket and it's overly salty, what would you do to to tone down some of that salt flavor? Well, I'm assuming it's you're tasting it at the end, and if it's too salty, I'm probably gonna let it sit in the au jus a little longer if if you have the time. Um, if you're Certain parts of the country where sweet with brisket does really well. You know, I'll say like the Kansas City area, you can balance that out with a little more sauce. Um, but it's a, uh, it's it's hard to take too much salt away, and it's a whole lot easier to add salt at the end. So you're saying, Paul, would you say that you would like to go a little bit lighter on the injection or the rubs, and then hit it harder at the end, or or just you're going to do what you do and, and figure it out once the finished product's done? Well, what what I do is based on just a lot of trial and error. So I, it should work out this way, but it doesn't always work out that way. And um, that that's where we're kind of getting at it. You, you're going to have to probably adjust something at the end, no matter how many times I've cooked a brisket, um, throughout all these years, it's still going to come out a little bit different each time. And it's kind of knowing what to add um, or, or how to balance it out better. And there's like a window that, you know, Paul's cooked, let's say, 100 briskets in the last two years, just conservatively speaking. He's going to be in a window. It might be a little under salty, maybe a little over salty, but it's not going to be like unsavable. So um, yeah. I'd, I'd rather – not add finishing dust at the end, say if it is too salty, as opposed to always doing that exact same detail. I'm going to taste a slice from the brisket and then make that decision. Does it need those extra steps that I normally put in? Like there's been probably twice this year that I've sliced the brisket and didn't put any finishing dust on it because it was already at the salt level that I wanted. Perfect. Great answers. Love it. Leads me right into my next question. Um, Winning contest has a lot to do with taking classes and learn, or either if you don't take a class, learning from others, learning from somebody that knows what they're doing. 
Um, always sharpening your, your knife, trying to figure out what's going on, being a better cook, all of that kind of stuff. And what you're saying is you can't just go to a class and, and just take notes and do exactly what they said, but you can take classes to get you in the ball game. Is that kind of what I'm hearing? Oh, for sure. For sure. Like, um, I try to take, well, the first class I ever took, uh, I'll go ahead and say it was Rod Gray's class. And he taught me the most just because I was, I was new at the time and he got me in the ballpark. I didn't win my first contest till after I took his class. And then since then, I've pretty much taken a class every off season. Um, and I take one or two little nuggets from each one. Like this last year, it took a little nugget on how to finish chicken. Um, took a little nugget on what to do with my ribs to get a little more flavor at the end. Probably the only two things I've taken from that class, but they, they've helped uh, for sure. And each class has helped a little bit. Gets you just a little closer to that, that goal that you're wanting, and that's a 720 that I want to see somebody get one day. It's probably going to be that guy. <laughs> um, but anyway, all right, so I have been very fortunate, blessed, um, to be a part of some of Paul's teachings. Um, he, I mean, just him and his, him and Lynn graciously came and, and taught at the Atlanta barbecue store classic class, uh, for the first two years and, and did absolutely amazing job teaching, uh, the time and effort and the thought and everything that goes behind it. They're great teachers. Um, and, and just the you just said conservatively, and I know you're the same way. You've cooked a lot too. Paul's cooked hundreds of brisket the past two years, and all that kind of stuff. So taking the class is going. You're going to gain some of that knowledge that these guys have cooked over the past years, and you and they're going to w- be willing to give out some knowledge um, in a class in a class setting. So I've set it up, um, and if y'all didn't know. <laughs> Paul and Drew, are y'all doing a class together sometime soon? Sometime soon. It's a it's a couple months down the road, but uh, soon enough. Uh, we've been uh, scheming it up for you know about a month now, and and I reached out to Paul and asked him because I mean if you don't know Paul yet, he is one of the most honest, highest integrity guys on the circuit, and he's someone that I would love to stand side by side and teach in. Um, I I knew when approaching him if I could get him to say yes, I would never regret it. Tell you what, this is going to be a dynamite class. Um, and you both, so if you cook on a stick burner, oh, if you haven't signed up for this class yet, what are you doing? Because, um, Paul, what do you cook on? An outlaw smoker, offset. All right, so there you go. And Drew? Uh, most of the time this year has been on a jambo. I've ran about four contests on gateways and won one with them this year, so – Okay, so uh, you do do gateways also. What will the yeah. class be on? It'll be on a Jambo. Yeah. Okay. So we have Stick Burner 101 yep. going on right here, right? Yep. <laughs> now, will Paul, do, oh, do you not use a gateway? Yeah, yeah. But so I'm, I'm going to be doing uh, the, the class is going to be February 10th and 11th. And that will be in Lebanon, Tennessee, which is just uh, just right beside Nashville. It's actually where Smoke on the Shores Barbecue Contest, which is held in March, I believe is when that is. Same location. Uh, it's 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 close to airports, close to activities there in Nashville. Um, plenty of hotels um, in in the area as well. And um, it's a Saturday Sunday class, not a Friday Saturday, so it gives you a little bit of extra time not having to take off work there. If you're like me, I try to conserve all the days I can for cooking season. Yeah. Um, for that, uh, um, Drew is the treasurer, so um, our flyers out there, and he's the contact for that um, to sign up for the class. And um, I'll be doing uh, chicken and pork. And Drew will be doing uh, ribs and brisket there. And for chicken, I, I do a little bit of both. I do cook on the gateway drums for chicken um, for some of the process and then also on the um, offset as well. Love it. Um, my, <laughs> can y'all see the comments? I cannot. No. Paul, can you see the comments? Yeah, I can look at them now. Here, let's see. Uh, gotta love it. Gotta love, you know, you got, anyway. Um, so there's questions about teammate discount. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I'll let y'all, I'll let y'all get in there. Um, and, and I'll, I'll bring them up in a second if y'all can't see them, but anyway, um, 
Y'all are awesome. So where can people sign up for the class? Uh, reach out to me if you can. Uh, my I'm trying to remember the flyer. I know my Venmo is attached to it. My email should be attached to it. If you can't find it, message me on Facebook. I'll get the information to you as quickly as I can. Uh, we do have a sign-up sheet. Um, get a deposit. I'll get the sign-up sheet to you. Return that to secure your spot. And um, we've got a couple seats already taken. And and uh, we do have a, a cap that we're wanting to hit at, at 30 people. So um, don't wait too long. Don't wait too long. And is there a is there a teammate – uh, is there a teammate for Chris and Brad teammate discount or is that anybody that I claim them? <laughs> yeah, I'll leave that up to Paul there. Yeah, you don't want to see him angry, so <laughs> he's a big man. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, so it's going to be a great class. It's going to be, it's going to, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to, it's going to be very worth your while. Um, and, and Paul, what is something that, what is something that people can ex or they don't know? What is there anything different, or what can they expect to get out of this class? Well, I think uh, you know we're talking about offsets, but um, you know I spent a lot of years on a water smoker. Um, Drew has a lot of experience cooking on gateways. The only man that I know of that's cooked all the meats on one gateway drum. Um, so I mean, there's a lot of. Uh, we might be cooking on those type of cookers at the contest, I mean, at the um, class, but there's a lot of knowledge in the background of cooking on different cookers and how to adjust from one cooker to the different cooker. And, and um, so no matter what you cook on, we we probably have cooked on between the two of us. Um, right. And so we can contribute to that as well um, on that portion of it there. Yeah, that's so I don't want to get locked into just what cookers we're cooking on. I mean, we've, we, we've been around and doing this for a little while. We've all been through quite a few different cookers and um, they all have their benefits and, and their, their downs as well. And we can help kind of sort through that. Yeah. I've noticed and I'm sure y'all have too. I mean, there was a big turn to drums and now the drums are still there, but you're starting to see a turn back to uh, stick burners again. You're seeing more and more stick burners out there and you're seeing a combination of stick burners and, and drums or stick burners and, yeah, grills or, or something along those lines. Uh, there seems to be a lot of hybrid cooking going on or whatever, um, mm -hmm. multiple cookers. Um, so I can't wait to hear what y'all have to say about all that and, and, and learning about that. So, guys, if you are interested in their class, get in touch with Drew. Um, if you can't find them, reach out to me and I will get you in touch with them. Um, great people. Going to be an awesome class. Like, I mean, and I'm telling you, I told you all that, that these are great people. We were talking before the show started, and 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 Paul literally said Nashville is a great place. So if you have families, you can bring your family and let them go do something while you're while you're taking the class or something like. That. I mean, there's so much thought goes behind this. They care so much about each and every one of you, um, and that's just what makes all this so cool and so special. So I can't wait to hear how this goes. I hope they sell out tonight or tomorrow. Um, it's going to be awesome, and. Can't wait. I mean, and I will say this, the Elaine Barbecue Store Classic class has very much appreciated Paul the past two years. I told him at Greenwood, I said, Paul, I don't want to burn you out. You're the you're awesome. You're an incredible teacher. And but I I just I didn't feel right continuing to ask. So unfortunately this year, uh Paul, you're not gonna be an instructor, correct? That's right. right. Yep. But you are more than welcome to be there. I don't know if you're coming or not, but you're more he's more than welcome to be there and hang out. Uh, I heard a little bit of the lineup. Yeah, it's 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 piqued my interest, that's for sure. Yeah, it's gonna be I mean it's gonna be good. I mean, I can tell you right now. So there's some there's some little show coming on after this on TV. Um it's not quite the uh Facebook live YouTube uh, level as Jill and the Barbecue Fab, but Barbecue USA is coming on tonight. And one of the instructors from last year who was supposed to do it had to back out on us to go to that contest and cook. So you be on the lookout for Jason Singletary with Smoke Central. Um, they will be him and Frank and Joseph. They'll all be on tonight. I'm sure there's many more on there tonight. Um, but Smoke Central will be one of our, one of our cooks or whatever teachers this year. So not that anybody cares about our class because we want to sell out y'all's class. That is the class that is going to be, Great. Or you come cook our, come take ours and take theirs, you know, whatever. There's a lot to learn. Can't learn too much. Can't ever learn too much. 
Um, Bill, how you doing, man? What's up, Aaron? How you doing? I have a crazy royal question. I'm considering doing a practice turkey smoke near an actual comp to work on timing for the royal. Am I nuts? I don't think you're nuts. Drew, what do you think? I uh, can't practice too much. I'm not the I'm not the best one at, at actually practicing, but uh, I mean it's not gonna hurt. Paul? You're wanting to practice turkey while you're actually cooking a contest? So that she can get her turn ins and everything timeline down for the royal. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> That's just me. <laughs> I, I'm not. I mean, uh, I'm. I'm. A, I'm a KCBS for me guy. The other stuff can sit on the sidelines, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and, and that's what I'm gonna focus on. I'm not gonna focus on steak and turkey and beans and coleslaw and soybeans and whatever else they got going on. I, I'm. I'm there for those for me. So uh, I, I would think I'd practice at home. I mean, it's easy to follow your timeline at home and and even mock up cooking the other meats and. I mean, I've got my timeline laid out almost for every single step that I do, so it's easy to see where there might be conflicts and things. But in the end, it's not going to go according to how it went in your driveway or at the previous contest, so you're going to have to adjust at the Royal anyway. Um, I was going to say, what is, your, what is your goal for the Royal? Um, to me, I, I, my whole hope, is that I get my, that I hear my name called in one of the four categories on either one of the days. So if I can get my name called in one of the four categories for the KCBS side of things, then I've had a great contest. Um, so therefore, the turkey smoke for me personally would halfway would be almost on the side um, <laughs> practice. Um, so that's just me and Paul, I'm with you. Drew, I get it. Uh, you know, I mean, it depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to go win the turkey smoke, then go for it by all means. But I'm like, for me, my goal is to get a call in the KCBS side of things. So I would be practicing as much as I can for a double more so than the, than the turkey smoke, but that's just me, whatever. I don't know. Y'all, y'all could, I mean, everybody in here is saying, what is practice? I don't know. But also once again, I mean, you look at who's watching the show, you look at who's talking on the show. They don't know. practice. I mean, but, but Paul said he practiced this weekend cause he didn't cook. So. Um, yeah. I, I, I practiced and uh, I did some new things. Um, I, I had the opportunity to, to shadow uh, Drew a little bit earlier this year. And I, I took some of the things that he was, saying to heart and I practice a little bit more here and I think it came out a lot better. So, I mean, um, well, watch I, out for Paul I, I've, like I've learned something already from Drew. So I'm, and I'm, I'm sure other people will as, as, as well, but um, even somebody that's been around doing this as long as I have, I still picked up some things. Um, when did you start Paul? We, we started about the same time. 20, uh, Gosh, I don't even know anymore. Um, I think I was like 2011. Might have been my first contest. Yeah, I was thinking 2010. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know if research sells turkey, um, but, you know, you can always bring a research <laughs> side to one of the cars. Yeah, it worked out for a guy we know pretty well. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's hear the story. I, I, it's his story to tell. but uh, Okay. He, 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 uh, <laughs> He did very well with a, a, a container of beans, I'll just say. So, hey. and I tasted them, and they were they were phenomenal. And he did a lot to them, but he he started with them. You gotta have a base, you know. I mean, you gotta have exactly. a base somewhere, exactly. and whatever you, you know, it's like, it's like blue salt, <laughs> right? You got a base, and then you got to do something to it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure, as many a many a desserts <laughs> yeah. that have been done that way. <laughs> yeah, a lot of cheesecakes. Oh man. Um, I think I start. I don't remember when I started either. Maybe ten. I don't know. Um. So anyway, so what we like to do on the show, I think we've promoted the class, right? Y'all feel good about that? Is there anything else you want to yep. talk about the class? I uh, just just knowing that you're going to get the, the honest truth from us. I've heard a lot of people question about when they go to a class, like you're getting everything. You're going to get everything and more. I will 100. percent I can't I can't vouch for Drew, Drew, but I'm sure it's the truth. I can tell you right now, Paul is not going to hold anything back. Right. Um, that's just the way him and Lynn are. They're going to, if they do it, they're yeah. not going to, they're going to yeah. tell you what they do. Um, and yeah, I, I, 
I was getting confused if I try to do something different. So <laughs> I'm not I'm not quick and smart enough to try to to fake it. So it is what it is. This is what I do. And that's I mean that's like I said, they're great people. If you want to take a good class, if you can't take our class, of course, there you know you, you go take this class. This class is going to be phenomenal anyway. Um, so <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I love the comments on this show. It's what makes it go, and I have a lot of fun with it. Um, so. Let's start here at the barbecue fed now. What is something that you're seeing going on in the barbecue trail today that is either different that you like or that you don't like seeing out there right now? Paul. Different. What I like seeing and what I don't like seeing? No, let's just stick with that. Yeah, let's just go with there. Yeah. Is that what you said? Sorry, I was reading the comments. I was trying to read the comments because you saw how good they were, and then you got me reading the comments. <laughs> Drew, I'll ask you. Go back to the comments. They're fun. Drew, let me ask you. <laughs> <laughs> what is the flag ball? <laughs> well, something, uh, and I, I, I should be easy at this. I'm, I'm pretty good at always complaining about something, even though I may not may not say it. But, um, and I don't mean complaining necessarily, yeah. but just something that is different out there that's not uh, that it's changing or that you it's good for barbecue, bad for barbecue. I don't know. Oh, I'll say. A good thing I see, and this this isn't necessarily this time of year because it's uh, just hot out there, but uh, I'm seeing a lot more Friday nights, at, and I'm not the best at this, but uh, people hanging out later, hanging around a fire or solo stove, uh, talking. Uh, I'm one that usually goes to the hotel pretty pretty quickly and pretty early, but uh, I do love seeing that camaraderie, and I think that's a, a, what barbecue is based around and, based and, and made for. It's just camaraderie and, and people – uh, being friends outside of the competition. Awesome. I love seeing that. That's like something that I'm, like, I'm really pushing for every time I go to a contest, which is never, but every time I go to a contest, I'm really trying to get everybody to get together and have a good time. Yeah. Um, Paul, what you got? <laughs> don't, don't you got me. Um, I, um, a disappointing thing. I won't say it's a bad thing. A disappointing thing is, is um, I, I know quite a few teams are not cooking near as much as they have been in the past. And um, some of the contests are starting to, at least for me, it feels like they're thinning out a little bit and getting further apart. And um, there's, there's several dry spots throughout the year now that where it wasn't in, in years past. And that's, um, that's sad to me. It's, it's, and, and so I guess that's why it's a bad thing. I, I hate to see some of the teams be like that, but um, life happens. It's and most of them have different reasons. It's not just, uh, it's not barbecue or anything like that. It's just, they have kids doing different things growing up that they weren't, you know, a couple of years before or the priorities have changed at home, things like that. So, but, um, and I don't, I don't, I don't see a lot of the new teams coming in. I do see some new teams, but I just don't see as many that are cooking out or, or leaving as much. Um, so that, that, that worries me a little bit. Yeah. I, I, I understand what you're saying and I, and I see it too. And, and we see more of it on the, customer side of things, right? People buying and new customers coming in and this kind of stuff and reaching out to us and telling us what's going on. Um, I do feel like you're seeing a trend go back to what it was like when we first, when we earlier years or when we got into barbecue there, for most part, a lot of people are staying relatively local to their area. Um, and I think one thing that's hurting that is there's not as many contests um and and the ones that are the ones that are making it seem to be doing really well um but the ones that were struggling and everything else it's almost like they they've been weeded i don't know um yeah there's definitely a feast or famine kind of deal that i've seen this year more so than others i mean you're right i mean you can go to a contest and it'll be 50 60 70 teams there and you can go to one the next weekend and it, it they struggle to get 20 you know it's just kind of strange when you look at it this weekend, I mean, Paul, are you cooking? And if so, like, or if you're not, how far would you have to drive to find a contest this weekend? Um, the closest one would have been that one that they canceled this past week, uh, the one in um, – Warsaw? Or, yeah, and that would have still been an eight-and-a-half-hour ride for us to get – Which it is – I mean, we're both in the south, and it's uh, in the summertime, and they usually do get a little thinner. But uh, yeah, um, in Nashville, I would think there would be one – at least one available within four or five hours of you. No, yeah. no, nah, nah, we hadn't had that for a while. Actually, we haven't had one close in quite a while. You know, it's kind of funny. I feel like during COVID, the South like 
carried a lot of team or carried a lot of contests. And there was a lot of contests during COVID in, in the South and in Kansas area and stuff like that, uh, St. Louis, whatever. Indiana, um, man, I'm telling you what, during COVID, <laughs> Indiana says bring it on. I mean, yeah. that, that state just had more contests than I think any state around. It was wild. Yeah, and now I feel like – like, I mean, I know in Georgia, we – it's – I don't know. We, we had um, – I guess you had the June contest at Lafayette and then there hasn't been anything until Kennesaw in a couple of weeks. I mean, you had Greenwood, which is in South Carolina. Uh, but I know down here, we don't, I mean, they're from, there's not hardly anything going on in, in this neck of the woods and Alabama doesn't have any contest anymore unless you're a backyard team. Um, <laughs> and then I do see where Florida, the FBA seems to be turning a lot of their FBA contest into KCBS contest. Um, South Carolina had the one contest. North Carolina doesn't. Have, I don't know. I just I just feel like the Southeast is is losing. And how many's in Tennessee? Not many. Uh, maybe four throughout the whole year. And I don't know. It's 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 quite interesting to say the least. I don't know what's going. And on. And both of those are kind of all in the same time period. I mean, it's. Um, that was uh, – we had one part this year, it kind of got frustrating, where we had uh, two full contests going on and then a rib burn all going on on the same weekend in Tennessee, and we have just literally just almost just one handful of contests for the whole year, and we're just like, come on, get this together here a little bit. Let's talk a little bit, spread this out. And I feel the same way in Georgia. I mean, like we have – I think October we have three contests. Between September, like, I mean, all of our contests seem to be right there in the middle of – and, I, and it's right there in the middle of the Royal and the Jack and Usyk U and all the big ones yeah. is when we have all the uh, um, is when we have all the big stuff. So I don't really know. I don't know what I don't know what to uh, I don't know what to think of that, what to take about it. But it's going to be interesting. Um, yeah, it could be just a roller coaster. Maybe maybe it'll come back again later. I'm not sure. It will. I mean, I th- but see, then again, I, I always say all the time, it's up to the organizers to to start doing it and planning it. I mean, Ellen, Ellen, like every once in a while, she'll be like, why don't we do two contests? I'm like, because one contest is a lot. And <laughs> but there's always that whole thing of like, man, why don't we do another one? Just just because as and have it be a cash in cash out kind of thing or do something to make it worthwhile. But I don't know. There's that's it's not easy. It's a lot of work. I mean, I've never organized a contest, but. I don't know if us cooks really understand the amount of work that goes into it. And especially for the ones that like the contests that we love, the ones that go the extra mile, they get the prize money that we want they get the amenities that we want. I mean, we need to be sure that we're thanking them and giving them their credit because we can complain about those other contests. Uh, but if we keep complaining, then that those are the only contests we're going to have left. Yeah. I always say if a good if an organizer does a good job and you like that contest, yeah, go thank them. Go yep. support them. Do what you can to, to help them do it again. If you know yep. people that are willing to sponsor or something, see if you can't throw them some sponsor money. Um, because it, it's not easy. I mean, we're right in the middle of doing our contest now. And um, it, it's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of it's a lot of planning. It's a lot of like hoping, right? Why don't, um, we, uh, why don't we plug your contest? When is it? Our contest is uh, November 17th and 18th. It's the weekend yep. before. Um Thanksgiving. And we're going to have live music this year. Uh, we're going to have a, we're bringing in a stage. So the stage is going to be up under a covered uh, Brit or covered something, another arena type thing. Um, taking over the whole, it's going to be, we're hoping it's big this year. Uh, we're doing everything we can to make it big. We're bringing in vendors. We're bringing in people's choice this year, uh, which is kind of funny because that is what, you know, for us, we're doing it to raise money. Right. Yes, we're putting on a contest for cook teams to go be a part of it and all that. But we're doing it so that we can raise money for a cause. Um, and that that's what's important to us is being able to to give back to the community. Um, so with that, uh, Mills by Grace, they partnered with us um, and they are they're jumping on board and helping and everything that we can bring in volunteers. Um, really just I mean, it's amazing when you find a good um cause to give to it's amazing the people that want to jump in and get behind it um and that's where we're at right now i mean people are, are loving this and loving who, what we're what we're supporting so people are willing to give and willing to do things and that's what it takes to put on a, a good contest and a good event 
Um, I know us cook teams, we're just like, hey, give me good water power, ice, blah, blah, blah. But there's so much that goes past all of that on an event. And, you know, I mean, people say all the time that, like, the best contests, the ones that always make it, the ones that last, the ones that are here all the time, tend to be events, like community events that people want to be a part of because that's what sustains a contest. Um, so, yeah. um, and it's not always the greatest for cooks, right? Like I get it. There's sometimes it's annoying. Like I know Scully, were you up there in Galax or wherever, Paul, wherever Scully was? No, we were in Ohio that weekend. Okay. You know, I heard somebody came up and took a rib off of, out of this box or off the plate where he was putting it on the box or something like that. I mean, yeah, you always got to do something like that, which sucks, which is terrible sounding. Um, he should, shouldn't make him look so good. Yeah. <laughs> Right. They don't ever come get my my ribs. Yeah, uh, no, I'm trying to give mine away out there. <laughs> it's hard to do. But anyway, so if you want to sign up for our class, we'd love to have you. You can do it from the website, our website, landbarbecuestore.com, or go to absclassic.org and sign up there. Love to have you. Bring everybody in. It's going to be a great time. And um, there you go. Yeah. I'm going to get my banjos out and just start banging on them, Chris. It's going to be awesome. Um, so anyway, that's uh, that's our contest. Paul, you're coming, right? Uh, yes. Yes. I will be there. You don't have a choice, do you? <laughs> <laughs> it is in Cummings, Georgia, but I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a great time. Hopefully, Drew, you can make it out. Um, Wes Garrett might uh, have a signing there this year, so y'all be on the lookout for that. Uh -huh. um, it's going to be exciting. Um, but anyway, uh, Paul, I always like to do this, so you don't act surprised when I do this, but – because uh, you always act surprised every time I ask you if you want to ask Drew any questions, and you can be the uh, the uh, talker instead of me. I'm going to try not to act surprised here. All right. Never, uh, it never happens to you. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't know um, what to ask Drew. Really, I mean. Um, uh, so which one would do, does you prefer to cook on if you had your choice between the drum and the offset? Oh, man. All right. Uh, and why? Okay. Um, I'd, I'd be lying if I didn't say it's the jambo. Like, I just feel like the food, especially pork. Like, I have a hard time right now with pork on the gateway, and I, I can't quite figure it out. Um, but I just feel like the food's just a little better on the jambo. Like I just, I love the flavor. I, now at home, I'm going to fire up that gateway all day, every day. Um, and I'm going to turn and burn and cook stuff fast, but, uh, it's so hard to screw up the offset, especially when you got the fire burning, you've got the, uh, temperature stays consistent. I only got one gauge to look at. Like, it's just, it's harder to screw it up. Whereas a uh, gateway, I've got two, three different, different fires that I'm having to watch. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, it's so weird, odd that you brought that up. Cause the first thing that I noticed when uh, we swapped from the water cooker, the Southern Q to the outlaw was, is that pork to me was the most noticeable difference of all the categories was, wow, this, this got a different little different flavor to it than what I've had. And I don't know, like if I was just anticipating that to be brisket because you know, an offset brisket just it screams Texas and, and just yeah. screams brisket. But I was, I was very shocked at what pork on an offset is like. It's, it's by far my favorite. Well, which was when you, when you go to a Texas contest, there's so many drums there. It's just, yeah. yeah. People don't, <laughs> people want sleep apparently, you know, they want to, they want to <laughs> start their fires at 6am instead of 4am. I get it, but you know, I can sleep at home. But yeah, but you know what? That that's my favorite time. That is my absolute favorite time in a contest. Is at, that? Well, oh, that's true. Uh, I didn't know he had an issue going on. That he was trying to dim out the lights or what? But, he was just trying to. He was trying to be in the background, like just talking. Nobody knowing all just all this information. Just see the cigarette light up and just see yeah. the little red light of the cigarette. Yeah. Uh, no, that's my favorite time of the morning. Is just that that first thing. It's it's normally kind of everybody's a little quiet and the sun's coming up and you get the smoke just now is really starting to hit and meat starting to smoke up a little bit and. Um, it's just a cool time to be there. It's kind of the calm. Everything's just real calm. So, so what time do you start cooking on a? Um... I light my fire at four o'clock. I try to get to a contest just a hair before four, and uh, 
light light my pit at four hits up to 10 by 445 and uh, i'm putting meat on about 510 510 paul <laughs> what about you paul <laughs> <laughs> uh, mine is um, I'm just a little bit later so about 425, 420 something like that I'll be lighting the fire about that time um, and then I'm putting meat on just a little bit later about 530 or so so Drew when you cook a, a contest with one drum what time did you start cooking? I think I started at about 345 uh, if I can remember I got the notes on my phone but uh, I think I started the big meats at about 445 and I hope uh, my plan was for them to come off before I uh, put ribs and or before I put chicken on. And I think at one time for about 10, 15 minutes, I had all four meats on. I had the, the flat and the pork on the very, the middle rack on the gateway and had the uh, ribs wrapped and one, one pan of chicken on the other side of the rack on the top rack. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, when you cook on drums, four drums, do you ever cook on four drums? I've never cooked on four drums. Or three uh, drums? The most I've ever owned drums. was three. I uh, started off this year, cooked on two uh, at the second contest of the year. They're in South Central uh, Missouri, <laughs> wherever that contest was. Uh, I, I bummed the one off of a buddy of mine up here in Arkansas, and uh, he hasn't requested it back yet. So I'm going to hold on to it throughout the rest of the year. And uh, idea. yeah, might buy another one in the off season. It's fun bouncing back and forth. Uh, it kind of keeps me sharp on those cues of cooking, I'm not relying on a timeline and actually checking tenderness, uh, cooking with your eyes, cooking with your senses. Yeah. Well, if you're at the, are you going to the Royal this year? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll have a drum that I'll use one time. If you want to take one, take one from there. I'll give yeah. You we'll see how day one. one goes. You know, if, uh, if day one turns out as a miraculous or something, I, I might just, uh, I might just try that. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, but anybody out there, if anybody's looking for a drum after the Royal, I'll have some. I'd love to, to not have to bring them home. All right. Uh, okay. So I'm just going to throw that I out. I think you won't have a hard time selling that there. Um, yeah, I hope not because we're we're flying. We're doing that weird thing flying out this year, and it's going to be weird, but whatever. Um, you're Brad? You're, you're, you're doing the Brad thing? <laughs> you, you're getting the Brad thing? I don't know if I'm going to go I don't think – like, that's a whole different level. Uh, we're just going out there having a good time. We're going to go have a good time and have fun, go see some of our friends and have a good time. Um, yeah, sure, David. I hear you. Yeah, well, you can save a lot of money if you if you do that, David. Not, not anything else. Um, all right, Drew, I gave Paul the opportunity to ask you a question. Um, you can ask uh, Paul anything you want to ask or me, but nobody ever asked me any questions. So go ahead okay. and ask Paul. Yeah, yeah. I didn't um, know that. That was an option. I'd love to know this answer, but uh, why why make the switch this year to the offset? Like uh, you were killing it with the water cooker. Uh, you were kind of known as the probably the last water cooker that I know, and you were just destroying <laughs> it for years. Why make the switch when you did? I was the ancient one out there cooking on a water smoker. <laughs> no, I think uh, you know we 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 just cooked quite like you said quite a few years on the water smoker and. Um, I just wanted to try. I thought I had the my tenderness and profiles where I thought did really well everywhere we went, uh, but I just needed. I think there was just a little edge I was seeking out, and I thought, well, maybe changing up cookers and getting just a slight different flavor profile on there that I can't get with the water smoker might do it. So that's that's was a big reason to to change. And did the you other thought offset once or twice last year. Yeah, we, we put, um, I think about seven times. I think we borrowed, yeah, we, we borrowed offsets and cooked on them. Um, trying to do the Brad, we're trying, trying to do the Brad thing just doesn't do it nearly, nearly as well as Brad, but, um, and just running up pretty, pretty empty and just borrowing everything. And, and, um, and how many GCs did you have doing that? I, I don't know. We got a couple on offsets actually. Yeah. That's now that's cool. about it. No biggie. Uh, yeah, but but it, it and we didn't we didn't change anything. That's that's the thing about it is the way I was cooking with the water cooker. It was just uh, more of a vertical run versus horizontal and the offset. So we didn't really change much at all. Um, and the other other part of it was is that we were just looking at it is it's a little bit a pull behind. I have a renegade that's 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 a pull behind cooker, and um, I it's just more versatile. I can I can just run with the truck or the camper or. 
hard and, and, and do the one and do them much, much faster. And, and it put me back outside. I can't tell you uh, being in, there's a lot of advantages being inside of an enclosed trailer, but there's a lot of disadvantages too, in my opinion, doing it for so many years. Um, I've really enjoyed. I'll ask you a second question. What's the disadvantage of being inside? Cause I wouldn't know. <laughs> 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 uh, the disadvantage being on side is uh, on the inside is that um, for, at least for me and my water cooker is that this time of the year, I probably would stroke out from heat. Uh, it's just incredibly hot on the inside. Um, and it's, uh, it's a little bit isolating. Um, some people may like that. Um, it's, it's fine at times, but I found myself really um, being completely shut off for a lot of parts. And so being back outside and, and doing a lot of stuff outside, it's, it's, it's been great for me. Um, I've really enjoyed it. Even beginning of this year, we had almost seemed like one monsoon after the other, each contest, but I, I still enjoyed it. I mean, that's, that's why we got started. So it's kind of going back. I love started. the rain. Uh, anytime yeah, I, it's rain in the forecast, I'm looking at those offset cookers and I think that's when they get the advantage on the drums. Yeah. I, I, it, it seems to do well in the rain as well. So, I, and that's, that's the reason why just, just to try something different, see if the flavor is a little bit better. It might give me a slight edge and, and I'm also just more versatile and, and, and a little something different. I mean, it's why you're changing up from drums to offsets, just kind of right. keeping it different. And yep. Keep it it's a fun. challenge. I mean, I, I think it's like, I always cook out. And that's one part. That's part of me. I, I, I'm glad you said that Paul, where you said you like, being outside and not being so isolated and, and you're part of the contest when you're outside, whatever. I, I love it. Right. So we cook as two of the barbecue fat. It's, it's me and Robert, right. Robert and Lex, we cook together as a team. I do everything outside. I mean, I bring all the meat outside. I rub the meat outside. I do everything outside in the morning. Um, and, and all of a sudden it's his time to start doing something. I'm like, where are you going? You, you, we got a table out here. You can do it. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to go inside. I'm going to go inside and do whatever. <laughs> I'm with you, but like, I get it. It's just, it's what, whatever you like, whatever you get used to, whatever you want to do. Um, but I, I just, I just laugh because everything I do is outside. I mean, I leave all my rubs outside. Like you can see everything I do and not that I care, not that anybody's like trying to figure out what we do. Um, but it's, it's just funny how the whole, people do what they want to do. Right. Like, I mean, he's used to going inside and cooking inside and doing everything. And, and, and to hear you say that you want to get back outside and be a part of it, I think that's really cool. Um, so. Yeah. It's just more interactive. I mean, if I'm set up next to somebody and they're outside as well, I mean, there's just, just, there's just more conversation going and just, you can tease a little bit more or whatever, or, or talk smack a little bit. And that, that's fun for me. I, I, I enjoy that. But when you're you're inside of a trailer, yes, you you can be extremely focused, and you don't have as near as many distractions being outside because you're going to have public, you're going to have just general things happening that you're you're not going to have when you're inside a trailer. But um, I I enjoy being back outside. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, good. Uh, what was your? Did you ask the second question? Oh yeah, about the being outside. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, well, that's awesome. Uh, so, Paul, anything else that you wanted to ask? Or you uh, not that I can think of. Okay, good. Um, we'll move on. Right, we'll move right along then. Uh, how is the camper living, camper cooking instead of trailer cooking? Um, camper, where you were, where you were in a trailer, right? Like, is there any difference to you? Yeah, I mean, the, the trailer was basically a trailer. I mean, we had a little bit of a, a, a bed area, but that's about it. I mean, it was still pretty much a shell of a, of a, a camper, I mean, a, a trailer. So, yeah, it's, um, um, it's, it's pretty nice. Um, I, I'll have to admit, it's, it's slow going down the road. It's, it's like driving a tank going down the road. But um, when you get to where you got to go, it's, it's pretty plush, that's for sure. Um, Lynn seems to enjoy it. That's, 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 that's a bonus there. That's all that matters. Keep them happy. Yeah, that and Hank. Hank. Hank really enjoys the comforts of the camper. Yeah. yeah, it's great. And Drew, you just so I mean, I'm sure everybody knows, but you cook out of you cook under a tent, right? Yep. Yeah, just ten by ten canopy. I uh, use my truck to, uh, as much as I can. Like if it's a windy day, I might season meat in the back seat of my truck or in the in the in the floor of my truck. Um, 
but yeah, I'm out there in the elements when it's 32 degrees or when it's 100 degrees like last weekend, and unfortunately, this next coming weekend too. Awesome. Who needs? Where, are you, going, where are y'all going this weekend? Me. I do. <laughs> I'll be, uh, I'll be in Dallas. Like, I, I kind of do. Yeah, I kind of. I'm, 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 I'm older, Drew. <laughs> Where are you going, Drew? My wife in one, because then I'd, it'd probably all be gone. Like, we we borrowed a camper or rented a camper at one or two contests, and I'm always scared that she's going to uh, demand those comforts. But so far, she's she's been a trooper. Yeah, I'll, I'll never forget. We were uh, we were in Covington, and I can't remember what it was. I can't remember if it was hot or something. And I, I asked her. I said, "Well, you know, you're more welcome to, to go inside the camper there." And she looked at me like I was crazy and says, "No, I don't want to get soft." <laughs> I was like, "Sure." <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll brag on her. One one story. Uh, she's about six months pregnant, and I drove up to uh, Chicago area, Belvedere, to cook that double. She oh, yeah. flew in. I picked her up at O'Hare on Friday night, and we slept in the truck that first night because I was just like, I can't pay for a hotel room for four hours of sleep, but six months pregnant, she, she slept in a, in a truck for me. So I, I've got to, I've got to thank her for, for putting up with me uh, for this many years and still, still enjoys it too. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'll tell you what, if you ever, I mean, it, you know, talking about the class, I mean, that's, that's a part that, you know, when I was watching Drew do that, um, I, I learned a lot and it just, some of the things he does, in doing that type of setup, he's learned little things to make it easier um, with regards to using his truck and his tables and his, and um, uh, uh, that's a little different than you might not get in some other classes as well. I mean, he's going to show you basically how to do this out back of your truck. I um, mean, tell you some little tips and things. And um, I, I, we, we tried it a few times uh, last year and, um, and it didn't bother us. So we just did that and got a hotel, but uh, I, I learned some things that if I was to do it again, I'd be incorporating those in, into my setup and how I do my meat and, and carry them and that kind of thing. So, Love it. I love it. There's so many different ways to do it and be successful. You know, there's not a right way or wrong way to do it. There's just your way and figure out your way and make it happen. Um, yeah. All right. We're almost done. That show's coming on. That's playing second fiddle to chew in the barbecue fat tonight. Um, but this is a big week in barbecue. Where will you be Thursday, uh, Thursday at some point in time? Trying not to watch my phone. Just trying not to, trying not to think about it. I'll be, for, the, for a change, I'll actually be doing work so that I don't have to think about it. There you go. What about you, Drew? Thursday? I feel like I'm missing uh, the punchline here, but Thursday I'll be making injections, making sauces, packing up the truck. I'm getting ready for Friday and Saturday. Man has no worries. He are you? Is he? Is he automatic? Did he? Uh, is he a auto, auto? Did he auto? Oh it? no! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's out of my control. <laughs> I'll know that by. Uh, no, I mean we'll probably know that by three, four o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. And it's earlier. Yeah, that's what threw me off. It's usually like mid August when they do that. Nobody, nobody. He you know when you're that good. Uh, it hey, don't matter. Hey, I've uh, I've the first contest we won. We we got drawn for the jack only with one win. Uh, didn't even know the draw was happening, and I started getting messages saying, "Congrats, man, good job!" And I had no clue what it was for. <laughs> uh, and then last year, I think we had a sixty-six percent chance. Like we had two of the three uh, bongs out of uh, Mississippi, and our, our good friends uh, with Kith and Ken, they got it and well deserved to them. But I've seen it Love with great guys. odds, and I've seen it's it. With horrible odds, it's out of my control. So, yeah, I don't know. Ellen's like, "Oh, we got." I was like, "We aren't going. We're not going to get picked. What? Don't even worry about it." No, no, I don't ever say that. I mean, you can do. It. Yeah, we'll see what happens, but you know, it's going to be. If we make it, great. If not, oh well. Exactly. exactly. Um, you got David crying over here with all your with all your nice talk. I mean, it doesn't <laughs> take much. He has a little. He has a little. On the. Uh, <laughs> he is kind of sensitive. Sensitive side, uh, great guy, though. great guy. Um, so when y'all see him, and if you ever see a little stinker out there, make sure that y'all say hello to little stinker, what's Gary? Uh, and I hope, I hope he gets out there to cook a contest and somebody says that to him, it will make my day. If you do it, please call me and let me know that it happened because it will be awesome. Um, <laughs> anyway. Real quick, you if you missed out, there is a barbecue class coming in Feb February, the beginning of February, that you need to be at. 
these two incredible pit masters will be there. If you want to sign up, get in touch with Drew, however that is, whatever you got to do, find Drew, get in touch with him, pay him money, get your seats uh, saved, and let's have a great class. I can't wait to hear about it. It's going to be awesome. Anything else, guys? Nope. Thanks. Hope to see everybody in February. Really appreciate you, Brian, for, for helping promote us and great people. Um, go check out the Atlanta Barbecue Store. If you're watching this, you know about the Atlanta Barbecue Store, but there are great people behind it. Support them. Help them out. We appreciate it, guys. Y'all have a great week, and we will see you next week on Chewing the Market Fed. Have a great night, everybody.